Damning new details have been revealed from the billion-dollar defamation lawsuit against Fox News for spreading the baseless conspiracy theory that the 2020 election was rigged against Donald Trump, including an admission from Fox boss Rupert Murdoch that the network's hosts endorsed that lie despite knowing the truth. And yet, even now, Fox's star anchors are still repeating the lie out of fear of losing Trump's base. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The conservative movement, led by their chief propaganda outlet, Fox News, has a problem. You see, they spent years laying the groundwork for Donald Trump's rise. Some of their star personalities, like Sean Hannity and Jeanine Pirro, even appeared on stage with Trump at a campaign event. The one thing that has made and defined your presidency more than anything else, promises made, promises kept. If you like the America that he is making now, you've got to make sure you get out there tomorrow if you haven't voted yet. Everyone you know, your grandmother, your cousin, your kids, even your next door neighbor, if you don't like him, get him out to vote for Donald Trump. I hate my neighbor and he hates me because he's always calling the cops to file a noise complaint even though it's just me talking quietly on the phone. <laughs> In fact, that microphone, that microphone isn't even on. Piro's voice just carries like that. If the microphone had been on, it would have flipped all the breakers in the arena. If you like the America that he is making now. Although, the grossest part of that clip is when Trump first invites Hannity up on stage and Hannity uses one of Trump's lines to insult the reporters covering the rally in the back then smiles at Trump like a little kiss ass. Sean Hannity, come on up, Sean Hannity. By the way, all those people in the back are fake news. He smiles back at Trump the way your two-year-old smiles at you when they first learned to poop in the toilet. <laughs> Look, Daddy, I went potty all by myself. But don't get used to it. You know, he's supposedly a host on an alleged news network. And by the way, they didn't have to call it Fox News. They could have called it the Loud Guys channel or, if they insist, Fox News, but spell news with two O's and a Z <laughs> so everyone would know it's ironic. Point is, he works for Fox News. He's campaigning on stage with a political candidate while calling the rest of the media fake news. Look, I think my politics are pretty clear, but I'd never appear at a rally for a presidential candidate, mainly because I would need cue cards, and for some reason, Wally can't get Secret Service clearance. It's true, Seth. I have a criminal record. Wally, <laughs> what crime did you commit? Oh, I commit a crime every night, Seth. You see, whenever I'm in front of an audience, I kill. <laughs> Don't make a Hannity face! <laughs> You're fake news. Anyway, we now know from a bombshell new court filing and a billion-dollar defamation suit that Hannity, along with other Fox hosts, are the ones who knowingly lied to their viewers. A stunning new court filing revealing how top talent and executives at Fox News trashed Donald Trump and ridiculed his legal team and their 2020 election conspiracies behind the cameras, all while hyping those same conspiracies on the air to their viewers. As Trump lawyers Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell were making wildly false claims about rigged voting machines after Trump lost in 2020, private communications reveal that pro-Trump voices at Fox News were calling it nuts. That whole narrative that Sidney was pushing, said Fox host Sean Hannity, I did not believe it for one second. No, oh, you didn't believe it for one second. Well, then why'd you have her on your show? Were you doing a segment on how leopard print is back in style? <laughs> Look at her, she looks like the Tampa Bay Realtor of the Year, but... <laughs> well, anyway, on a tough year, it should be noted. <laughs> In fairness to Hannity, maybe, maybe he was just grilling Powell on this narrative he says he didn't believe for one second. Let me ask you, and I asked you about this on the radio show today. I've gone over everything I've been able to find out. Nobody liked Dominion voting systems, nobody. You said to me that there were people watching an internet connection in real time, but they can't speak publicly and haven't signed affidavits to that. Why? Well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, some uh, are within the government. We've got evidence of corruption all across the country in countless districts. The machine ran an algorithm that shaved votes from Trump and awarded them to Biden. 
They used the machines to trash large batches of votes that should have been awarded to President Trump. And they used the machine to inject and add massive quantities of votes for Mr. Biden. The only reason I we thought, really found thought, out how bad it was. I thought Democrats told us that we like whistleblowers. You're saying that these people can't talk because they're going to lose their job. I would think they're that they get protection. They're going to lose their job. They're their lives have been threatened. Uh, one witness we know of got beaten up and is in the hospital. It's very sad. One witness we know of got beaten up so bad, his head started to leak. <laughs> so Sean Hannity, the guy who gleefully stood on stage with Trump and called the reporters in attendance fake news, was on air endorsing the views of a person he himself said he did not believe for one second. And just to be clear, it's not just me saying Hannity endorsed that lie. It's Hannity's boss, Rupert Murdoch. A new court filing this week features a partial transcript of a deposition with Murdoch where he admits that Fox hosts endorsed the bogus claim that the 2020 election was stolen. Here's part of that conversation between Murdoch and the attorney questioning him. Now, as I read this, I just want you to know, I can't really do a Rupert Murdoch impression, so instead, I'm gonna read his answers in the most cartoonish Australian accent I can manage. <laughs> Here we go. You are aware now that Fox did more than simply host these guests and give them a platform, correct? Uh, yeah, I'll thank you, uh, show me. Uh, some material, I'll uh, support all that. In fact, you are now aware that Fox endorsed at times this false notion of a stolen election. Uh, not Fox, no. Uh, yeah, not Fox, but maybe uh, Lou Dobbs. Maybe uh, Maria. As our uh, commentators. We went through Fox host Maria Bartiromo. Yes, yeah, come on. Fox host Janine Pirro. Oh, I think so. Fox business host Lou Dobbs. Oh, yeah, Dobbs, he did a bit, yeah. Fox host Sean Hannity. Ah, oh, the wombat. Yeah, a bit. <laughs> Sean the wombat Hannity. Oh, we're in the document, correct? Yeah, they were. About Fox endorsing the narrative of a stolen election, correct? Uh, yeah, some of our commentators. Yeah, they were endorsing it. About their endorsement of a stolen election? Yeah! Yeah, they endorsed it. <laughs> anyway, the point is, Murdoch said, quote, they endorsed, meaning Fox hosts endorsed the lie that the election was stolen, knowing it was a lie. In fact, that same court filing also revealed that Hannity later changed his tune on Trump after the January 6th insurrection, although you'd never know it from watching Hannity's show. Again, this is from Sean Hannity's boss, Rupert Murdoch. According to the court filing, Paul Ryan, who is now a Fox board member, had emailed Murdoch, Ryan believed, that some high percentage of Americans thought the election was stolen because they got a diet of information telling them the election was stolen from what they believe were credible sources. Rupert responded to Ryan's email, thanks, Paul, wake up call for Hannity, who has been privately disgusted by Trump for weeks, but was scared to lose viewers. Oh my God, Sean Hannity was disgusted by Trump? What else was he doing in private that he wasn't telling his viewers about? Was he wearing a resist t-shirt and playing with <laughs> gender neutral potato head gods? Oh God, was he eating woke M&Ms? <laughs> Milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. hand, hand. <laughs> That's right, Hannity was, according to Rupert Murdoch himself, disgusted by Trump. But Hannity didn't tell his viewers that, just like he didn't tell his viewers the stolen election narrative was BS, which brings us back to the central problem. The conservative movement led by Fox is currently facing. They created this monster, but they don't control it. They know that. And that's why they're terrified. Right now, they're desperately trying to put the genie back in the bottle. They're hyping Ron DeSantis as an alternative to Trump, even though Trump still leads in many polls. Just watch this clip from Fox & Friends earlier this week, where host Brian Kilmeade scurries around a Florida diner, just desperately searching for someone, anyone, who is willing to back DeSantis over Trump. First off, Metro Diner here. I got a question for you. Ready? All right. 2024, who's pumped up for the election? All right. Rap, rapid fire. Who's your man? Who's your woman? My man, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Christy, no. Christy, no. Who's your man? Donald Trump. Or a woman? Donald Trump. 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 A lot of Trump fans. Trump and Nikki Haley. And Nikki Haley. Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. All right, so far, a lot of Donald Trump. I see, I see uh, Governor DeSantis. What about President DeSantis? I like it. I like uh, it. Who's your pick? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Trump or DeSantis? I'm either or. Right, I'm so either. you're right in the middle. Yes, I What you pumped up for? I am super pumped. Oh, my God. That was like watching a gerbil trapped in a maze for a science experiment. Just <laughs> locked in there, desperately searching for a reward pellet. 
Also, it's fun to watch Brian Kilmeade run around a diner while Smash Mouth plays and at the same time think, he ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Also, I would just like to point out that according to the clock on screen, it is just past 6.30 a.m. and they are blasting the Shrek soundtrack. <laughs> Obviously, a pretty conservative place, but based on the fact it's the crack of dawn and your diner is a standing room only dance party, seems like Bides America is going pretty well for you guys. <laughs> you all got egg money. Now, before you make the shape of an L on your forehead in regard to Kilmeade's inability to find a DeSantis supporter, even I feel bad when he finally sees someone wearing a DeSantis T-shirt races across the room to talk to her, and even she says she's torn between DeSantis and Trump. Come on, lady, that's almost as bad as wearing a shirt that says, ask me about how I'm voting for DeSantis. Are you voting for DeSantis? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I just wanted to be asked. <laughs> Kilmeade ran to her like he saw a tunnel painted on the side of the mountain and thought, I'm gonna catch that roadrunner. <laughs> but that clip perfectly encapsulates the problem for Fox News. No matter how hard they try to wriggle their way out of the situation they put themselves in, they are captive to the audience they created. That's why Fox was terrified of losing viewers in the aftermath of the election, and that's why they were willing to do or say whatever was necessary to avoid losing them, even if that meant repeating outright lies that they knew were outright lies. Fox host Tucker Carlson was apparently so terrified of Trump that according to the court filing, he wrote in one text message that Trump is a demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. I don't even think I've ever called Trump a demonic force. That's worse than anything I've ever said about Trump, including the time I called Trump a Oh, I got some, I got some lip readers. <laughs> Tucker was apparently so terrified of this demonic force that when a Fox News reporter fact-checked Trump's unhinged claims about Dominion on Twitter, Tucker wanted her punished. When Trump falsely claimed that Dominion machines cost him 2.7 million votes, Fox reporter Jackie Heinrich responded with a tweet saying, Dominion voting and top election infrastructure officials categorically deny this. Some of Heinrich's colleagues at Fox wanted her to be punished, even though they knew that what she was saying was true. Please get her fired. Seriously, Tucker Carlson wrote, host Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity, it needs to stop immediately, like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down. Not a joke. Yeah, cancel culture, am I right? But there you go. <laughs> Faux populist scourge of the establishment, Tucker Carlson, was worried about the company's stock price. You know what that means. That means on top of everything else, on top of being a liar, racist, conspiracy theorist, he's also one of those guys who actually uses the stock app. I mean, what kind of monster? Isn't that the first thing we all do when we get a new phone? You either delete the Stocks app or you move it into a folder called Apps Only Psycho Use, <laughs> along with Apple Maps and Compass. <laughs> oh, so you guys, why is there a Compass app? <laughs> is a large percentage of Apple's customer base sailors? Arr! I think we're lost. You find the North Star and I'll open the Sextant app. Ah, Avasti mateys, anyone got a charger? <laughs> oh, he's down to 2%. <laughs> Blackbeard, use your head. I'll tell you this much. If things ever go badly enough that, yeah, we're, gonna st we're still on compass bits. <laughs> we'll get back to the news with a uh, bone to pick, right? Every now and then, you know, a door opens and you get a chance to unload a lot of thoughts you've had about the compass app. Sure, I can move back on to Fox News, but we talk about them all the time. This is my one chance. <laughs> and look, I can tell, I don't need an app to tell you're not fully with me. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. If things ever go badly enough that I need to use my Compass app, start writing my eulogy. If my phone <laughs> knows me at all, I'll click that thing open instead of north or south, it'll just say, you're gonna die in these woods. <laughs> See? Also, let me just say, by way of comparison, as far as I can recall, I've never once looked at Comcast stock price, mostly because I'm super worried it went down when I was doing my Australian accent. <laughs> I don't want to get a call from the head of international business affairs telling me, oh, I might give it a raise, crikey. <laughs> Yet, two years later, Fox is still scared of losing that Trump base. And so two years later, they're still repeating those same lies about the 2020 election. Now, they just do it in their 
thinly veiled, just asking questions style. Here's Tucker doing that just last month. There are so many unanswered questions, some of them lingering. How, for example, did senile hermit Joe Biden get 15 million more votes than his former boss, rock star crowd surfer Barack Obama? <laughs> Results like that would seem to defy the laws of known physics and qualify instead as a miracle. Was the 2020 election a miracle? Was the 2020 election a miracle? Did God himself intervene to make Joe Biden president? And if so, how did he do it? Did he go to a polling place 15 million times in different disguises to vote for Joe Biden? Did he go one time disguised as a chef? Did he go a second time disguised as a pilot? Did he go a third, a fourth, and a fifth time wearing all the various costumes from the village people? And if God did do that, it would raise the question, what if God was one of us just a slob like one of us, just a stranger on the bus? Was he trying to make his way home? And if he was trying to make his way home, how did he find it? Does he use the Compass app? <laughs> I remember, we stuck it out, we stu it paid off. And if all of that's true, does that mean God committed voter fraud? And if God committed voter fraud, does that mean he's... Fake news. This has been A Closer Look.